Hi, everybody. Gene here. Before we jump into today's podcast, a moment of celebration, which is appropriate considering what we're tapping on today. March 3rd was the nine-year anniversary of the launch of the Tapping Q&A podcast, which is one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me in my professional life. The podcast has taken me all over the world, and it's put me in contact with really amazing people just like you. And so I just wanted to start off by saying thank you. Thank you for downloading the podcast. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing it with your friends. Thank you for subscribing. It really means a lot to me when I sit here in my home office recording into a microphone talking to the thin air, knowing that it is going out there into the world and it is touching people just like you. I also want to thank all of my really, really amazing guests who have appeared on the show over the years. They're one of the main reasons why this has been so successful. As part of celebrating the podcast's anniversary, I'm actually giving away a bunch of free time with me, one-on-one sessions, to tap on anything that you want. If you would like information on how you might be able to win one of those sessions, all you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash nine years. And that's the number nine years, and years is plural, tappingqna.com slash nine years. I will include a link in the show notes so you can click there and you can see how you could win some free time with me as part of this celebration. I hope you enjoy today's show. This is Gene Monterostelli. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 308, originally aired March 7th, 2018. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending a little time with me. As you heard at the top of the show, this is the ninth anniversary special. And over the weekend, when it was actually the day of the ninth anniversary, I spent a little time tapping in celebration. And that might seem like an odd thing to do tapping for celebration because normally we lean into using tapping as a tool when we're in emotional discomfort, when we're in physical distress, when we're trying to transform something that is unuseful, that it doesn't make sense that we'd be tapping at these moments of success. But when we are feeling anything, typically we're not feeling only one emotion, that there's this whole constellation of emotions that are existing all at once. We just notice the emotion that is the strongest. For example, I could be in a circumstance where things are going badly and I could be angry and sad at the exact same time. And one of those emotions, the anger might be the one that's most pronounced, but I'm still mourning the fact that I'm losing opportunity because this thing is going wrong. And the same is true when we're experiencing positive emotions as being the emotion that's the front. There could be emotions that are hiding in the back. And if while experiencing success and while experiencing celebration, there are negative emotions that are going on at the exact same time, there's a part of your system that's going to say, oh, when I celebrate and have success, I also have these bad emotions as well. And so even though I want success, I don't want to have these bad experiences. Therefore, I'm going to prevent success in the future so I don't have to deal with this. You know, you might be in a circumstance where success brings attention and there's a part of you that doesn't want attention. Or because you've been successful, people are going to want you to keep being successful at this level. And all of a sudden there's this added stress. Or you could even be in a circumstance where you've been taught over and over again that we need to keep our head down and keep working hard and it is arrogant to be having this success and I should go back to work. And if those emotions are existing and those beliefs are in your system, they're going to start sowing the seeds deeper of self-sabotage so you don't have to bump into those emotions again. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to tap for success and address some of those negative emotions that might come at the exact same time. So even if you haven't had a specific success today or a celebration like I am going through celebrating the podcast anniversary, I want you to think about a time in which recently 
you were successful at something. And actually, it doesn't even have to be recently. But I want you to think of a time that you have been successful, and I want you to just revivify that in your experience. Imagine being there, taking the steps, pay attention to who is noticing you, and really get in touch with those emotions. Because if there are negative emotions that are lurking under the surface, they're going to be there as well. And this is going to be a perfect opportunity for you to undermine those unuseful limiting beliefs so it creates space for you to be successful again. Because we need the opportunity in the world to be successful and we need to be able to seize those opportunities. And if these limiting beliefs are strong and if success and celebration is something that becomes scary, you are going to do a very effective job. As my buddy Brad Yates would say, you're going to do a brilliant job of sabotaging yourself so you don't have to experience success, which means you don't have to experience those negative emotions. So take a nice big deep breath for me. And I want you to tune into a moment of success and celebration. Taking another nice big deep breath. And as you're taking the second deep breath, tap on the side of your hand. And again, just be really present to that success. Put yourself into that moment. And just move from tapping point to tapping point, repeating after me. I'm glad I have this moment of celebration. I am glad that I have been successful. I appreciate all of the effort that I have put into this success. I appreciate all of the time I have put in to make this happen. I'm glad I've had this success. And it is appropriate for me to celebrate this success. And even though I understand intellectually, I should be celebrating my success. It is possible that there are subconscious beliefs about how success is bad and celebration is bad. There might be a part of me that is afraid. Since I have had this level of success, I always have to have this level of success. That this new success has become the new standard. I appreciate the fact that standards change. I am glad that I'm consistently striving for more. But I appreciate the fact just because I have achieved this now does not mean I have to achieve this forever. This is a moment in time which demonstrates what is possible, what is possible does not become the new standard. I give myself permission to continue to have success. without feeling like I am creating unrealistic expectations for the future. I also recognize that in success,
people notice that I am having success. And there's a part of me that doesn't like that sort of attention. There's a part of me that just wants to do the work. That wants to invest my time in what is important. And then move on to the next thing. But I know that with this success... It is about me and what I'm getting from it. I'm not doing it for the attention. And any attention I receive does not impact that success. I give myself permission to focus on the success. I give myself permission to focus on what I achieve and have because of that success. Which gives me the opportunity to build on more success for the future. There also might be a part of me that doesn't feel worthy of this success. It believes others deserve this success more. It sees others who have worked hard and not had the same success. It might even believe that this is some lucky fluke and has nothing to do with me. And since it has nothing to do with me, I shouldn't have the success. I recognize the fact that I was made for success. I recognize the fact that I was built for success. I see how my success serves other people. I see how my success allows me to keep moving forward. I give myself permission to accept success. To utilize the success to build upon. To know that this is not some fluke. To know that my success is not stealing from someone else's opportunity. I give myself permission to allow success to happen again. To know I'm worthy of this success. And to know I'm worthy of celebrating the success. Nice deep breath. Now, I would encourage you right now, if any of those things poked something inside of you or another emotion or a memory or a limiting belief popped up inside of that, jot that down right now because you're going to want to go back and go after it. And you can do that two ways. One is go back and retap through this again. The other is to take that particular belief that we surfaced inside of this and really go after it. And this is super important because if there is a part of you that thinks success is dangerous, you are going to do everything in your power to ensure that you are not successful moving forward. Be that in your personal life, your family life, your physical health, your work, any of those places that it sees success as dangerous, you will stop it from happening.
And if you're, and if you're stopping yourself from taking the action, then it's going to be difficult to see if you're heading down the right path. So that's why this sort of work is so important. So you can use a moment of success. You can use a moment of celebration to unpack and uncover these beliefs. Um, again, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. If you want to celebrate along with us and take advantage of some of that celebration, go to tappingqna.com slash nine years. Again, that's the number nine years. Years is plural. Um, if you can't find that, drop me a note, gene at tappingqna.com. If you'd like to hear our entire archive, all nine years of the podcast is available online absolutely free of charge. All you need to do is go to tappingqnapodcast.com. You can find the podcast in Apple Podcast, in Google Music Play, in Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and there's something coming that's really, really awesome that it's going to be one of less than 50 podcasts in the world that's going to be accessible in this way. I can't wait to share that information with you once that is done. If you have a question, if you have a comment, as always, let me know. I love hearing from people just like you, Gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqna.com. Or if you're listening to this in the website, all you need to do is click on the contact link. On the website, you can find a script for what we tapped along today, but you can also find it in the Tapping Q&A app where you have access to all of the old tap-alongs printed out right there, so you don't need to be online, you don't need to listen to anything, you can tap to it. You can find that both in the Apple App Store as well as the Android App Store. Information at tappingqnapodcast.com. Thanks for nine years. Here is to nine more great years. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Monterostelli, Tapping Q&A 2016. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Monterostelli or Tapping Q&A.